still hello good afternoon everybody um so uh, so yes so far um bill and stuart have taken you through some of our anybus products so i'm going to, to shift brands on you now and we're going to have a look at our exact product range um in terms of the the sort of the history and why HMS has these different product brands. As Abdul said at the beginning, one of our um, ways of growing the business, growing the technology, is to acquire other companies. And 13 and a half, or no, nearer 15 years now actually, HMS bought Ixact. Ixact being a, a German company with a great pedigree in working with CAN networks. Um, and just a bit of personal history, I used to work for um, a local company that distributed Exact, so I followed them to HMS. So I've now been with HMS, um, sorry, I'm getting my years muddled up here, seven, seven years, so it was about eight years ago that I bought Exact. Um, I've been working with them for many, many years before that. Um, but yeah, so Exact is, a, is a, a range of products now under the HMS banner, which supports and works with CAN networks. And within this range of the Exact products, we have sort of four subdivisions that uh, we work with. So embedded control is basically the, the CAN products, and I'll explain more about those. The safety products um, are an important part of the exact range. A lot of safety um, protocols and certification is done using TUF in Germany. So exact being just down the road from those guys, you know, it's not a bad fit for us to have our safety experts there in the exact group still based in, uh, in Germany. So they, they have safety products. The little image you can see there is, is an embedded I.O. safety board, but they also have safety software applications and we can work with OEMs to, uh, to develop safety solutions with them. Um, the energy communication is, is one of the newer branches, which again is, is very popular in Germany. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit about that. And then automotive as a, as a complete sort of range of products, because if you have learned anything about Canvas, you've probably heard it mentioned to do with your motor car or the controlling of a diesel engine. So automotive and applications with engines is another strong part of the, the exact product brand and range. So if we just think about the, uh, the different areas uh, in a little bit more, this, this is probably the area where you're going to get most customers asking and interested in the exact range. So it's what we call our embedded control. And this covers our exact products, which allow customers to monitor or control um, devices running on CAN bus from a PC, and also to, to change the, the layout and the setup of their CAN buses themselves. So products and solution, pretty much based on, on CAN, some industrial ethernet built in as well, but for embedded control systems, controlling machines and devices. So, Within this, this range of embedded control, we have four subdivisions. Um, the interfaces is the, again, the, the most popular. This is where the majority of our sales are that, uh, that you'll see. And they're the very much, you know, customer finds the product they want. They know what they need to achieve. They'll just ring up and order it by part number very often. Um, so the interfaces we deal with here are between a PC and a CAN bus. Uh, repeaters, bridges, and gateways, well, repeaters and bridges particularly. These are, are what are known generally as, as topology products, so ways of changing the layout of a CAN network, but still within the rules of the, the CAN protocol. And then the gateways, just as we have our Anybus gateways, we have a, a set of gateways to convert from a CAN-based protocol to something else. So those, those are the four areas where um, you know, sort of very much customers find what they want, and they will talk to you and say, can I have one of these, please? So the, the CAN interfaces, um, we support within a PC, different PC buses. Um, so if you ever opened up an, an old style PC, you'll probably have remembered PC, PCI cards. You know, they, they plug in and out, they, they have connectors. Um, and we still have a lot of customers who are dealing with um, PCs which are going into to maybe military applications or going into um, environments where, where you know, a bespoke PC is required. And so the, these PCI buses and, and PC-104 buses, they're still out there, they're still being used. But over on the right-hand side, you'll see what are probably the more obvious connections for a modern PC, the USB and the Ethernet, and possibly even the Bluetooth connection. So within the CAN product range from Ixat, 
we can connect to a PC via one of these different methods so that customers can monitor what's happening on a, con on a CAN bus. They can interact with the, the devices connected via CAN. And all of these products come with a very simple monitoring tool. So on a Windows PC, you can sniff the CAN bus, see what's happening. Very popular for customers if they're trying to, to decode or, or you know, reverse engineer what's being transmitted on a bus. So I mentioned the, uh, the USB is, is by far and away the most popular, and we have different models of this to, to cover different eventualities. So within the, the standard range, the USB to CAN V2 is the, the sort of classic ones that have been around for a long time, and they differ based on the number of connections to the CAN bus. So we have a compact, which has a single CAN connection. We have the professional and the automotive version, which can connect either to two separate CAN buses, or to connect to two places on the same CAN bus, being able to see what's happening either side of a, a device or something like that. And they support different um, types of CAN within there. CAN as a protocol is, is always expanding. One of the major um, shortcomings of CAN buses is, is the limited amount of data and the limited speed. You know, CAN was designed for passing very short packets of data very quickly around a bus within a car or within a, a controlled short distance. Um, so the original CAN protocol has a limit on eight data bytes um, and one megabit per second maximum data speed. You know, those of us who are coming in from the Ethernet world, we're going, well, that's not very, very much. What can we do? So CAN FD has been expanded and extended to add further speed and ex extended packet sizes within the CAN protocol. So we support CAN FD on a, a similar range of interfaces. So USB to CAN supporting this new higher rate, higher data packet sized CAN FD protocol. And then on the left hand side, we, we have a, a, a sort of our low cost entry level CAN interface. So a single CAN interface, USB on the other end. Um, it, it comes with a, a cut down version of the, the monitoring protocol, but it's yet your, your sort of cheap and cheerful that everybody would want to include with an OEM application going off to their customers. So Simply CAN is the, the newest addition to our range of USB interfaced CAN bus. Um, and you know, your customers can easily pick which is the, the best solution for the fit that they've got. So we try to offer the best interface no matter what the application. Okay, so here are a couple of applications. Okay, um, Bombardier, uh, they make um, all sorts of wonderful, interesting uh, vehicles for, for hobbyists. So ski doos and, um, you know, sort of water, water based craft, and, you know, things on four wheels. They've designed in a, a manufacturing um, requirement to be able to, to do diagnostics for their service team. So they've got a CAN bus. These are all based on, on an engine which, uh, which has CAN bus in it. So they have branded a version, they have an OEM version of our USB to CAN interface, which they sell internally to their service partners, enabling them to use a laptop, use a computer to do diagnostics and service testing on these vehicles when they come back in. So it's a solution partner, you know, the partnership has been going for many, many years, um, and we've sold many, many hundreds of these USB to CAN through Bombardier in that way. On the right hand side here is uh, another type of solution. This is a, a more built in solution. So within the ticket machine, um, they, they want to be able to, to create a, a simple controlling and um, uh, monitoring solution again. So they're using a field bus network rather than a point to point cabling and the CAN bus gives them that. Um, within the, the ticket machine, they're using little IO boards that we've developed for them, as well as our, our standard USB to CAN as a controller interface to, to enable there to be a PC within this ticket machine itself, controlling the, the other functions of the machine. So machine communication within a, a device or an external connection for monitoring or, or for diagnostics of a, of a device. The, the same type of interface can apply to, to both sorts of use cases. Within the automotive side, again, you know, we, we do a lot of work with, uh, with test systems for, for engine manufacturers. So, so looking at a, a test system connecting to the CAN bus within the, the engine. 
um, another automotive application, which is particularly close to my heart, is that, that we've actually sold TAN interfaces to, to monitor the, the wind tunnel use at most of the Formula One teams around the world. So, uh, so all of the, the wind tunnel testing, the data that they're capturing from those tests is coming back via an exact USB to CAN or, or CAN interface of some sort. So uh, with my, my uh, background of, of motorsport supporting, that one, that one I like gets me to visit some nice customers. Um, and machine communication on the right here, we're, we're looking at a, an office uh, PC controlling a system to keep the, uh, the price down. Um, so again, all the, uh, the, the controlling between the different parts of this particular machine, I think this is our, our um, post office franking machine type uh, setup, but all of the, uh, the, the parts of that are connected via a CAN bus and the PC is, is there controlling the, the whole operation because PCs are cheap as chips, easy to understand, anybody can be you know, sort of writing an application to run on a PC, um, they can just grab the data from the CAN bus with a, an interface. So these case studies are, are, are typical of the, the applications and a lot of them are available as PDFs, so you can work with them um, with your customers and, and share the examples. Okay, um, I mentioned the, the other part of this connection, the topology com components, um, and these typically are used for, for customers who've got a canvas in a tricky environment. So they may, might need to make the, uh, the, the network longer than the, the limits that are legally allowed within the protocol. They might want to, to change the way the topology is, maybe make longer branches or, or have a star topology. They might even need to change the, the media. Maybe they need to go across fiber optic or across Bluetooth in a, a noisy environment. Um, and Canvas is, is very um, robust when it comes to, to EMI. Um, it's very good at uh, recognizing errors and recovering from them. So the topology products will help customers to create a more robust network and a more flexible network to, uh, to work within their environments. And we see these in, in boats as, as well as in small machine cabinets. Sorry, they went one too far there. Okay. Um, so there are different models. I, I, you'll get the presentation. I won't dwell on these. Um, very often, again, you know, the customers will probably find the, these solutions themselves. Um, but the, the thing with a, a lot of our topology products is that they allow you to do things like filtering and conversion of the data. So Stuart mentioned earlier that our Anybus gateways, generally you can't do any data transformation. Within the, the exact products, the configuration tool does allow you to do conversion of the data. Um, and the, the bridges and the gateways will, will also do conversion to other protocols as well. So this one here mentions you know, MQTT. The, uh, the protocol that a lot of people are starting to use for very low cost data transfer. Um, the, uh, the, the versions of the CAN bridges which complete, which are um, connected via Ethernet, they have things like MQTT built into them. Okay. So some examples of, of the sort of applications of those, um, you know, setting again up you know, sort of machine communication, being able to extend across areas where there's a very heavy EMI, um, and the, the CAN bridges there could create shorter lengths of network um, that were robust within themselves and extend the overall end-to-end -end cable length as a result. Uh, in the building automation side, um, we've got, you know, again, we've got a, a long CAN network required for a top-to-bottom elevator within a, a building. And uh, in this example, again, they needed to extend the, the length of the CAN bus increase the number of individual nodes past what is allowed within the, the protocol. So breaking a network down into smaller segments allows them to create what is logically one end-to-end -end network, but physically has been broken into smaller lengths which can run at a faster speed. Within the, uh, the maritime, again, we have, um, we have dedicated applications that, that customers working with, uh, with a maritime solutions can use. Um, but as much as anything else, our, our standard CAN bridges and CAN repeaters, again, can be used for, for this type of application very easily. Um, so you know, again, the filtering and the changing of the, the topology of the CAN bus is, is what all of these customers um, chose the exact products for. Um, gateways, 
very similar, very similar to the, the Anybus version, so coupling from a, a CAN bus to a non-CAN bus type um, gateway with all the same you know, advantages that, that it, Stuart and uh, Bill have already gone over. So I, I won't dwell on the, the reasons there, they're the same ones. Um, the CAN at net is, is our most popular one going across to, to an Ethernet gate, um, Ethernet to CAN bus gateway. Um, but we also have versions to, to support particular protocols like um, CoffeeNet or I mentioned you know, MQTT and things of that type. But these all come with, as I say, very simple to use configuration tools, which allow you to do data manipulation and, uh, and convert and change data formats from, uh, from one side to another. Okay, and some, uh, some use cases for those as well. We've got lots of use cases and we can, we can give details if, if something strikes you as being similar to the customers you're talking to. But you know, CAN bus is very popular in building automation, is very popular in medical applications, um, and it's very popular in the environments where there's you know, a lot of noise or, or distance required. The, um, the next part I, I just wanted to, to look at, spend a little time on is our exact energy communication product. Um, we're seeing a lot of um, situations where customers are, are needing to feed back into energy networks. Um, so things where customers are talking about smart grid, um, we're looking at uh, in, you know, industrial applications, um, where the utilities and the industrial networks need to be able to share data between them. So this is a, a gateway solution and the, the typical applications are within power supply, rail network supply and, and industry. And the SG gateway um, will cover protocols that work within all those three different areas. So some of the examples that we, we've got here, um, the use cases is, is the easiest way to work with. Um, you'll see some of these numbers flying around. So Modbus, yeah, we're, we're usually pretty happy about Modbus. Um, we're looking at PLCs, which are talking about yeah, coffee net, coffee bus. Yeah, that's great. Then we start getting all these strange numbers, 61850, 6870-5. These are the, the smart grid protocols. And uh, often the, um, you know, the SCADAs and the systems that are being set up to, to monitor and to work with these will only be talking this protocol, not the Modbus or the Profi that, uh, that we know and love within our industrial networks. So here we're creating the gateway to, to share the data from one side to the other and, uh, and give our customers the ability to, to report and to monitor what's happening within the, the different environments. So, you know, substation automation, remote automation, automated substations using PLCs, you know, they need to be able to convert um, monitoring energy consumption. So the, the gateway will, will allow factories to, to monitor consumption at different times and the PLC can then control the use of the equipment for, for off-peak hours and things of that type. If you have any, any applications where customers mention um, a sort of smart grid, mention these energy protocols, um, probably I would suggest you contact us. Uh, we've got uh, it within our, our local HMS group, we've got um, a sort of a team member who, who is very hot on, on this and, and can work with directly with your customers to help you identify the best solution and, and get them the products that they need. Um, so we're, we're very you know, sort of very keen to, to make sure that the, the, the approach is, is right. This isn't a, um, a network style which is very common and very, known, very well known in the UK yet. You know, so we, we're prepared to, to give you a lot of support on, on these, uh, these gateways and these protocols. Okay, I mentioned the functional safety. Um, it's really just here as a, as a reminder, it's possible if you have customers talking about safety. Um, typically, these, these will go into the OEMs uh, who are developing their own safety applications. But of course, you know, with the, the Profi Safe um, offerings, you know, we, we do a lot of work with uh, customers who need to work with those safety PLCs. So again, if you have any, any queries about that, we're happy to, to help and assist there. And uh, again, the automotive, a lot of the products that I've already explained are used heavily in automotive, but uh, if you have more applications or more specific requirements, then you know, we've, we've got uh, team members who can help you discuss that using the, uh, the terms that the automotive people like to use. Okay, so any questions on that? Uh, thanks, Siobhan. Thanks very much. That was very informative. Um, 
We do have a question though. Um, it's Andy Cote. Uh, do you deal directly with utilities, companies, and people like National Grid? Now, um, Andy, what I would suggest is if you um, contact me uh, regarding this, uh, and we can discuss how, how we deal with this. If you've got an opportunity or uh, if you've got something that needs discussion, then we can discuss it offline rather than here. Um, but any opportunity that comes up is uh, is up for a discussion, and I'm sure Siobhan will say the same. Is that yes. correct, Siobhan? Absolutely, yes. Um, I mean, we we do have uh, internationally we we have customers, but within the UK, um, the, you know, the grid and uh, you know, smart grid is is still a very new market. And we're we're trying to find the best way in. So if, if anybody has has the you know, sort of contacts and is working on a project that could be linked, then yep, talk to Abdul, talk to to the guys at Mac. And through them, we can we can work with uh, with you to, to get the best solution. Uh, 